Hello, welcome to section two, um, Influence and Business Activity. This is 2.2 Ethical Influences on Business Activity. Our learning objective today is uh, what is meant by business ethics? What types of ethical issues impact business activity? Why and how there can be a conflict between ethics and profits? And then we're going to look at the advantages and disadvantages of adopting ethical policies for businesses and stakeholders. These are the key terms that you need to um, get your head around um, and on your sheet make sure you fill in um, those definitions for the key terms. So to begin with let's establish what um, business ethics are. Okay, Essentially it's a business doing what is, um, what is morally right. Okay, Now some activities that business engage in could be, um, could be legal Okay, so in certain countries there might be um, no rules on child labour. Okay, so that might be legal, but is it ethically right or morally right to engage in those kind of activities? Okay, um, it might be okay for you to engage in a certain type of advertising, like saying that cigarettes is um, is good for you, but is that morally right for you to um, engage in doing? Um, now, acting ethically uh, involves business being honest, trustworthy, fair, caring, respectful, um, trying to be lawful and accountable for their actions. Acting ethically is also um, quite good for um, business and is can be regarded as a, a good marketing tool um, for, for businesses. Various issues. Um, that can come up um, for for businesses such as um, allowing suppliers to pay poor wages uh, are products that they use tested on animals um, do the products that they sell harm the environment or do this maybe the suppliers they use use harmful um, uh, harmful practices this slide outlines what I've touched on before that um, there are sort of various range of business activities. So if we look at the far right, we look at illegal activities. Now, there's some things, particularly in the UK, that is illegal, such as using child labour or paying below the minimum wage. And that we regard as, as, as is illegal. But then there are some, if we look in the middle, there are some legal activities. OK, so maybe selling foods high in fat and sugar, maybe pay, paying managers high salaries and the sort of lower down employees very low wages. Now, this would be regarded as legal, but is it morally correct? Okay. So, if you were watching this, would you potentially pause this and do question one and two, um, and, um, and then carry on with the video? Okay, so I'm now going to run through in the next few slides um, some of the ethical issues that businesses um, face. I've touched on a lot of them already, but I'll go through each one in turn. Now, first one I'm going to look at is whether marketing is truthful. Um, maybe sort of when products might be marketed to children and things like that. So there's a plenty of ethical issues that come up when considering advertising your products. And I've got a few examples on the next slide. So if you have a, have a look at these, um, all these sort of marketing activities could be regarded as um, as legal, but is it morally correct to do so? OK, so if we look at the two cigarette examples, the Viceroy's and the Camels, OK, um, your dentist recommend Viceroy's that, you know, that that is that is not truthful. And the same here, more doctors smoke Camels than any other cigarette. OK, um, and then there are sort of things, uh, marketing examples that we re may be regarded as sexist. So Yorkie, it's not for girls, the Reebok um um, example of cheating your girlfriend not on your not on your workout is that a sort of a morally correct way to conduct your marketing okay um, vitamin water you know maybe is good for you but is it really going to keep away the flu it, you know particularly thinking about where we at where we're at now with covid is um, advertising like that sort of helping is it is it is it morally correct and then you've got things like happy meals which is essentially packaging um, an unhealthy meal for children um, and sort of making it out to be sort of a, a positive thing, okay? There are many issues that come up when dealing with suppliers, particularly when you're um, a big company, okay? 
Um, because you're a big company, you can often take advantage of smaller companies. So a good example of this would be um, supermarkets and um, dairy farmers. So often um, supermarkets are the only people that will buy the milk from dairy farmers. So what often, what they might do is they're going to pay them a very low price for their for their milk. They're going to delay delay payments because um, they know that they are the only ones buying the milk. So they they are in a position of power. And is it really morally right and ethically right for you to abuse that position of power? Okay. There are often many issues um, when just when you're a big company, you're using um, a lot of different suppliers in your supply chains. If you imagine Nike, okay, they don't um, make their goods at each stage of production. They'll often subcontract that out to um, different businesses. Okay. Um, so maybe those businesses do engage in child labor or paying low wages. Um, and that brings sort of potential sort of marketing problems for companies like Nike, because they're not engaging in those activities, but are engaging with businesses that do do that. Okay. Um, animal rights is often a big ethical issue. Okay. Um, you don't get it so much now, but some products um, definitely used to be tested on animals, particularly sort of um, cosmetics, okay? Um, and often those businesses that do engage in testing animals do not often gain um, much traction with consumers these days, okay? Um, also, you know, if you're using if you're using animals in the food chain, um, making sure that they're killing them humanely, okay? A big one for a lot of um, a lot of people when um, trying to engage with companies and maybe what they're going to buy is do they treat their workers um, well? Okay, do they make sure customers are safe? Do they get received good training? Are they paid a fair wage? Okay, um, so we've probably all heard stories about how horrible it is to work for uh, Amazon. And maybe some people choose to not engage in Amazon because of the treatment of their workers. Okay. There's also um, things like giving workers zero hour contracts. Now, um, if you speak to your parents, I'm sure they would say that the contract they have is for 20, 30 or 40 hours a week. So they're guaranteed that way. So if they're off ill or something like that, um, they'll still get paid that uh, that wage. But then there, some companies do offer zero hour contracts where no every every week or every month, you're not guaranteed any hours and are only used when they're busy. Well. That's difficult for people to sort of plan ahead and to live their life in that way. So is offering zero hour contracts really sort of morally correct? It might be good for business, but is it good for is it good for the workers and, and, and fair on them? Then you've got fair trade, okay? Um, offering them um, sort of, uh, offering fair prices for suppliers in, in developing countries. Uh, I'm sure you've all been to um, co-op and the, a lot of these businesses engage in fair, fair trade. Now, often some of these goods might be slightly more expensive, um, but you, at least you know the products you're buying are paying a fair price to um, farmers in, in third world countries. Okay, um, so, Businesses outline how they're going to act in a socially responsible way or an ethical way by something called a corporate, corporate social responsibility policy. Um, and most businesses, uh, most big businesses for sure have uh, have these. Now outlines maybe their policies on child labour, how they're going to dispose of waste, how they're going to act in an environmentally friendly way, how they're going to treat their workers, how they're going to treat suppliers and so on. However, um, there are some businesses that um, have these policies, but can contradict themselves in the way that they act. Okay, and this can often lead to maybe um, um, consumer boycotts where people choose not to purchase from those companies. So, again, a good example um, of that is is Amazon, who do have one of these policies, but um, because of their treatment of workers, people choose to um, boycott um, buying from Amazon. Um, being a sort of an ethical business um, can often help you um, stand out in the crowd a little bit. Okay, so on previous slides we touched upon um, the body shop um, with their cosmetics that gave them a good competitive advantage. Another example would be Cooperative Bank. Um, and many other banks um, they use the money to uh, maybe invest in um, maybe unethical. Um, 
unethical businesses because it means they're going to have a good quality return and maybe give you um, much higher interest. But Cooperative Bank um, invests its money in ethical causes uh, and so on. And, and that can often attract people to bank with Cooperative Bank um, as opposed to um, other, other banks. So um, a question, you can pause this here, go through question three and four, outline how the following ethical issues for business and so on. And why do you think it's important for business to have a social responsibility policies or to have an ethical policy? Um, we're now going to look on to business ethics and profits. Now, if a business chooses to act ethically, um, we're often going to see their short term costs rise. Um, um, and as a result, it's, it's going to mean uh, their profits are probably going to drop because if they have to maybe buy some more environmentally friendly um, machinery or they have to make sure they're paying their um, consumers a fair wage and so on. OK, so in the short term, they're going to see cost rise and as a result, their profits drop. But in the long term, they should see a much better reputation and in turn, um, their profits uh, improve. Question five, how can acting ethically help you stand out from the crowd in your industry, uh, including an example? Okay, so um, to finish off, um, so the advantages of ethical policies, uh, it can maybe mean that you can uh, charge higher prices for your goods, gives you a better reputation, um, improve your profits, hopefully. It's going to increase, uh, increase your attraction to consumers because um, of your better reputation. It's going to be, um, it's going to motivate their employees because they're working for a, an, an ethical business and maybe you're offering them um, um, good working conditions. And it means you've um, sort of really vetted out your suppliers um, and you've got good quality ethical suppliers also. However, it can lead to higher costs, particularly in the short term. Okay. Um, and if you say that you're going to um, act ethically in your in your corporate social responsibility policies and you don't do do what you said you're going to do you can uh, le can lead to consumer boycotts this slide outlines it in a um, in a mind map if that's um, how you prefer to look at it okay so to finish off okay question six seven and eight advantages disadvantages and then number eight it's more about your own um, own idea whether you think acting ethically is um, is a good thing or not you could do six seven and eight as a sort of a finishing off essay questions if you wanted to get into that mindset okay thank you very much